Hey, Psych2Goers! Measurements of intelligence come in many different forms, but the two you probably hear the most about, IQ and EQ. What is an EQ? How does it relate to your IQ? To better understand EQ and IQ, we'll be comparing the two and sharing the signs that you have a high IQ, but not a high EQ. So what is IQ? IQ refers to your intelligence quotient. This is usually derived from a test that assesses your overall ability to process and relate information, recognize patterns, and access working memory, among other factors. IQ is generally thought to be influenced primarily by genetics, but can increase or decrease slightly based on certain factors. Hate having your intelligence measured during those timed tests? It can be pretty stressful. But if you're discouraged by your IQ score, perhaps you have a higher EQ score instead. So what is EQ? EQ refers to your emotional intelligence quotient. This refers to your ability to understand, identify, and control your emotions. Unlike IQ, EQ is thought to be more fluid and can change over time. Also, unlike IQ, EQ is not typically tested in the same way. While typically people with high IQs will also have a high EQ, the two work independently from one another. So what if you have a high IQ, but not a high EQ? How would you tell? Well, here are some signs. Number one, you feel emotions intensely, but have difficulty controlling them. Do you often lash out at others? Do you feel your emotions bottled up inside of you and then react strongly due to these intense feelings? High intelligence is associated with intense emotionality. You may find yourself reacting strongly to the world around you and have extra perceptiveness to your situation. While there are many benefits to this, including having a strong sense for activism, appreciation for beauty, and deep empathy for others, it also comes with a number of downsides. If you have a low EQ, you may find it harder to cope with the darker side of having intense emotions. Emotions can overwhelm you and you may have difficulties managing them, which can lead to you lashing out at others, turning to substances, or finding some other unhealthy way to cope with your situation. Number two, you're a high achiever and a perfectionist. Do you hope to accomplish great things? Are you a perfectionist? Highly intelligent people often achieve a lot and with ease, especially if you are in an environment that allows you to grow. While high achievement is not necessarily a requirement for all highly intelligent people, they often find that their gifts and unique abilities can drive them to do great things. However, if you have a low EQ, you may find yourself getting caught up in the small details as a perfectionist. Perfectionism can slow your productivity, stress you out, and make you difficult to work with. Working to ease this tendency can make projects flow more peacefully, quickly, and collaboratively. Number three, you struggle with relationships. What do your relationships look like? People with high IQs often report difficulties in their relationships. You may find yourself feeling misunderstood, overlooked, and having a hard time relating to others. EQ can play a factor in this as well. People with low EQs tend to have similar issues and may find themselves further struggling with empathy, keeping a two-way conversation, and maintaining a connection to others. Number four, you procrastinate. Do you procrastinate? Procrastination is generally associated with having a high IQ, not necessarily out of laziness, but as a way to take the time to consider ideas before jumping in. Additionally, having a higher IQ can mean the riskiness of putting something off is less than what someone else may struggle with. However, procrastination is also associated with having a lower EQ. This can be attributed to the added stress in delaying an important task, which can be counterproductive in some circumstances. Number five, you work hard, but neglect self-care. Highly intelligent people tend to care a lot about the projects they're working on and can tirelessly pursue them. However, with a low EQ, you may find that producing a solid product can come at the expense of your physical and emotional well-being. You may work late into the night on an assignment while skipping meals and sacrificing sleep. Finding ways to balance your hard work and self-preservation will be beneficial to you and your projects. So it's best to work on that assignment now with a snack rather than later, unless it's already way past your scheduled bedtime. 
Number six, you're impulsive. Did you know that there is a correlation between impulsivity and a high IQ? The same can be said about having a low EQ though. While people with a high IQ can be incredibly methodical, at the same time, they may find themselves jumping into situations and winging it. This type of risky, impulsive behavior can come with a plethora of consequences that seem counterproductive. Having a low EQ can also contribute to similar behaviors. While generally, those with high IQs may find improvising easy as they can easily navigate problems that arise, having a low EQ as well can lead to even riskier impulsive behaviors. With increased emotional intensity, having a low EQ in this area can lead to risk-taking behaviors involving substances and jumping headfirst into situations without thinking about potential consequences. So do you think you have a low EQ? High IQ? Are those timed parts on the IQ test so stressful that you can't seem to think or answer correctly? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. High IQ or not, at least we can work on your EQ too. I'm guessing those tests aren't as common. Some do exist though, and some are not timed. Do remember that while generally having a high IQ is associated with a high EQ, this is not always the case. Being in tune with your emotional state is extremely important for your well-being and finding ways to be more mindful and self-caring can be a great way to unleash even more of your potential. We hope you were able to find this video insightful and we encourage you to share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and share it with someone who might find it interesting. Subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell icon for more content like this. As always, thanks for watching.